have sunk an enemy destroyer. Hey team, this is Ripper here. We guys are doing fantastic today. We got a fun video with the map Northern Waters and Clan Battle today. And uh, we're going to talk about uh, specific roles and positions as well as unique uh, ships that allow you to do certain different things. And uh, again, it's a, a plethora of strategy tactics as well as just straight up gameplay and uh, skill. So as always, before we begin, if you see value in the channel and you like what we're doing here, like, subscribe, button below. Appreciate all the support. At 4,000 subs, do another premium giveaway. So as always, thank you guys for support, making this community a better place, and we're learning something at the same time. So let's get right to it. So what do we have right here? Basic clan battle season right now, 7 versus 7, with a lot of restrictions going on. But, you know, even with those restrictions, I've seen a lot of great techniques of what people have been picking. Both sides of the aisle, uh, people picking different ships, different play styles, different unique uh, makeups. And it's very, very cool and really interesting. Today, we'll take a look and um, evaluate how those things are going. But this one's a basic map. Northern Water is pretty fun. Uh, the, the biggest uh, concern is this contesting cap right here. And forgive me if I only caught a screenshot of... Um, this uh, portion of the map. Usually I have a bigger, uh, you know, HD screen, but today I forgot to take a snapshot of it. But we'll, forgive me and bear with me. This hopefully gets uh, the message across, but this is the basic uh, contesting cap. Biggest concerns are these two islands right here. They give you a very, very good cover. So the biggest um, solution that uh, most people I've seen use with this kind of makeup was they'll send one radar cruiser right there to give you kind of that uh, idea of, uh, I'm sorry, give you radar coverage to allow you to, you know, spot the destroyer and keep that person out of the cap as well. You're going to bring another cruiser as well. Heavy pushed alpha is a contesting one with the battleship in tow to provide heavy fire support. Now, the biggest one, of course, that another DD is going to go in there, probably spot or cap. Mostly, I think in this one, we use the uh, summers to go in and cap and spot. And you have a, a, the option of torpedoing and egressing it back and forth right there. Uh, the other one, the other battleship will obviously linger in the middle to provide fire support in any direction requiring that uh, support. We also have a San Martin. Again, uh, different different makeups of this it allows you to do different strategies. So, and you'll notice in this one, we have the Commissar, which is the uh, airplane spotter gimmick thing, which I di really disagree with that they have, but if, unfortunately, unfortunately, they have here anyway, so might as well use it. They have the plane spotting ability. So basically, you can just spot your plane all over the map and you figure out where they're at. So the jig is up, right? The other one was we have a San Martin. San Martin, I think, is broken OP because of the fact that it has a 9.1 concealment. And then all of a sudden it has a nine kilometer radar. So very broken for a destroyer player because as soon as you spot the um, the the San Martin, all of a sudden they pop the radar and boom, you're you can't escape it. I mean, it's a decent enough long and lasting uh, radar that all of a sudden they just pump a bunch of AP into you because I have to turn away. And as I'm turning away, I'm using broadside, and I can't use my smoker then because I'm caught in the, the radar. So basically, that technique is very, very powerful. So what we did, we have a San Martin and use that to hunt the destroyer into Charlie Cap. It's a free cap for us. And me and the Druid, this is why makeup ship makeup is really, really important in this uh, this kind of a strategy because I finally realized how to play the Druid in clan battles. A lot of people say, oh, you can't do a Druid in clan battles. It's not, it's not worth it. You can't do anything. It doesn't have torps or anything. It just has guns, right? Well... I found out how to play the Druid in competitive is really you got to be patient and you use it like, like literally a small tank where you're literally creeping from island to island and you're kind of using cover and you're just slowly progressing at quarter speed forward and that allows you to just grab positions, use island covers so that way their support is not there. I noticed that, again, any destroyer caught in the open uh, with four against four ships and a radar cruiser it really can't last the stand of time. So I found out you have to eliminate their 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 position their support by slowly hugging islands and and just creeping in and out of these islands and using that to block their support so that all you you have is a one-on-one -on -one engagement with their destroyer so that's how i wanted to play it where i've used the destroyer to really just to bully their destroyers they have no destroyer capability because there's only one or two right and usually in clan battles you're not facing against three or four destroyers you only got like maybe one or two at most maybe three and really you're going one-on-one -on -one against a druid and i find that a, a destroyer going one-on-one -on -one versus a druid just is not a fair fight which i like i don't want to appear a fair uh, fair fight um uh, in the military and even uh, i just watched a movie about you know if you're trying to pick a fair fight you're you got a st terrible strategy okay um if you ain't cheating you ain't trying so that's how that we do it in the military you do not want to pick a fair fight in any kind of engagement you want to pick an unfair fight so this is kind of how i actually position and the reason being is I want to go island to island and cover so that my San Martin has got me radar covered around here. So if an, a DD does get spotted, boom, he pops the radar and he eliminates that DD. Or if that DD goes out wide, 
If the destroyer does end up going wide like this, I'll meet them head on and I'll go one on one. And again, that one on one versus a druid is just not a fair fight. It's really, especially if you play it a certain way that I play with it, where you're hugging island cover, you're you're basically negating any kind of supporting fire because remember their ships are way back here usually, and their supporting fire will not be able to fire through islands. And I mean that's at least one mechanic of the game I do um, understand that that actually will work and help me out. So I I use that to my ability. And you're gonna notice once we do that and we eliminate the destroyer, we're gonna push continue pushing through and using island cover and just push right through and then we flank with a druid into bravo and then that opens up another avenue of attack through here because as the ships are focused on me then we use our ships at the bravo to then take broadsides or citadels or flank and that allows us to push right into bravo and now we have an entire cap uh, over here bravo Charlie, which is very 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 difficult to defend meanwhile our uh, supporting force at alpha will either contest or overrun it or retreat so you have two options there it gives you a very very good you know um you know, idea of how to actually employ this tactic and strategy. We'll look at the map. I'm sorry. We'll look at the video and see how things actually turn out. And we'll actually go play by play and see where things are going and uh, how they're actually progressing and see if it actually works out. So let's take a look at it right now, the the, uh, the replay, and uh, see how it actually turns out. So we'll uh, initially we'll watch the replay here and uh, kind of speed up the initial positioning. We'll speed it up so we're not bored to death. Again, I like the Druid a lot. It's uh, If you guys don't know what it is, it's in the Research Bureau. Um, is it worth it? It's up to you guys. You take a look if the cost is worth it. It's with up there with the Vampire too. It's basically kind of that daring kind of build where it, uh, the daring British destroyer kind of style, but it has only two guns in front, very, very powerful guns, and uh, no uh, torpedoes. Okay, right off the bat, we, what are we looking right here? We see a Smolensk. Smolensk is a very, very deadly uh, overpowered uh, cruiser back in the day. Everybody hated it, and that's why they kind of got rid of it, selling it, and it's still available. Some people still have in the game. I have not seen many Smolenskes in the game because it's a kind of a glass ship. If you nail it just right, I mean, you can sit all, even I can sit all in the Druid, so you're going to see me do that in a minute. But right here, okay, so here's that situation I was talking about. I'm spotted, okay, but you know what? I'm using island cover, so it doesn't help. Um, their team. Okay, I get spotted right. I pop smoke, go undetect. There's a strategy right there because I know uh, he's right there with RPF. He's in this area right here. So we know that he is in front of me, which means he out detects me. So look, I got Mars over there, which means that the other destroyer, which is I believe the Yu Yang, out spots me. So I know I'm not going to win that battle of spotting. But however, I've got the gun advantage, and he doesn't have torpedoes against me because remember, deep water torpedoes on the Yu Yang cannot hit a, um, a destroyer, only uh, cruisers and battleships and carriers, right? And my HP is about 28,000. So I know I out, um, DPM him, I out health pull him, and I out uh, do everything else besides spotting. So he, even though he spots me, it doesn't matter. I know the strategy is he's got to fire at me in order to do any kind of damage, which means he'll reveal his position. So I have that advantage right there. St. Martin, as you can see right here, is uh, helping me, backing me up at Charlie. Summers and is holding all this entire flank back here. And that's really, really interesting. We'll take a look at how that makeup is. So, okay, let's take a pause of the video over here and see actually how um, this uh, this uh, actually is the position. So we got, let's see, let me move the ships into where we're at. We had the Summers out here. We've got um, our, our cruiser out here. And let's see here. Uh, I'm sorry, Moscow, Commissar. Okay, so sorry, my bad. So we have the Moscow right here. We have Wisconsin reach, you know, angling back here. We got the Commissar right there providing airplane support. I'm way out here. And of course, San Martin's right there. And of course, we have the battleship in the center, as always, Vermont. So that's a pretty big um, battle. So you can see the, the basic makeup of what I've seen our people are doing, where they put a lot of radar cruisers. Uh, over here at this back island. I have no idea why. This seems like your guns are out of position anyways. And then you have this cruiser right here, which you have radar support, which I do agree with. That's very good. Then you have the fast attack Marceau, gunboat, a DPM. Very, very powerful in that regard. They only have a Smolensk and a destroyer out here with a battleship and support. And I believe their last cruiser is somewhere back here. I'm not really sure exactly where. So that's the basic makeup, as you can see right there. And, the, and it looks like Alpha is really just a stalemate. They're just holding it while we continue to push in over at uh, the Bravo Charlie side. And uh, hopefully that actually, um, and, and you'll see just it's just sheer uh, out positioning gameplay. And let, let's take a look at how actually how this plays out. So again, we're spotted. Again, let's speed this up. The Commissar is going out there spot. Again, I think that's a broken a gimmick of the thing. I don't think it's a good thing. Okay, now here we go. We got Smolensk right here, right in front of us. I'm calling for support, so I called in the Commissar to go spot, which is great in that regard, using airplanes. Again, I hate the fact that there are airplanes in it, but if you got it, why as well use it? So Smolensk is going to show us broadside around this corner, so we know he's coming around the corner. I'm still not spotted. Okay, RPF just switched over to the right. Which there's a Yu Yang, so I knew he's over there. He's in his smoke, so once he goes into smoke, no one's spotting. There we are. We're using our... <laughs> look at that. I'm citadeling a cruiser. 
which is exactly why I don't think the Smolensk is as strong anymore because you can settle that very, very easy. But when it's in, in the smoke and getting perma, perma spotting, then that's great. Now, unfortunately, the Yoyang made a mistake because now he's not spotting for the Smolensk. I pop my smoke. There's no radar over here, so I have the advantage in the sense because now I can either sit at all the Smolensk or sit at all, or take out the Yoyang. I'm gonna wait here for a second right here and kind of find out, analyze the situation right there and figure out where are they at because I don't know where they're at. One guy could be on my left, one guy could be on my right. I could be basically pins removed or flanked right here. So I'm gonna wait a second for their smoke or somebody to make a mistake. Yu Yang goes out of a smoke trying to spot, so they made a mistake right there, and there, there's nothing more you can do. Some, um, I'm, I'm actually, I'm sorry, the smart, same Martin can actually go in and radar, so that actually helped out a little bit. Ooh, we almost dodged that torpedo right there, or almost got hit. So we, now we got spotting for on the small lens right now, so we, now we can shoot right on his broadside. Look at that. Hopefully we can get a nice blind fire bro, uh, sitter. There's one sitter all right there. Very good right there. Awesome. So we're going to keep shooting in the blind fire smoke and see if we can get any kind of chip damage as possible so he can't recuperate the health. Now we're going to push, okay? So we elected to push now. San Martin is out of our his radar range. He's going to go ahead and progress to the west, and we're going to just bully the destroyer right in front and take on the Smolensk as well. Again, using that smoke cl cloud because, remember, if they're in the smoke, they can't see me either. So I'm going to use this opportunity to capitalize on it, to move in as fast as I can and just eliminate right there. Okay, their smoke is starting to go away, which I actually caught a break. So now that the smoke is going, they have no cover. So right now I'm going to take advantage. I have to eliminate small lines. Only 1,000 HP. His guns do a significant damage. Boom, there we go. And now we're, we've got the Yoyang right in front of us. He has no torpedo power, so we can bully this guy right off the bat. And let's take a look at how I'm aiming right here. I'm going to go back and look on, shoot to the right, shoot to the right, aim right in the front, right in front, and boom, he goes down right there. And that is how you eliminate the uh, whole entire flank with the druid right there. Again, this is a heavy build druid because um, I wanted the heavy, uh, the uh, what's it called, heavy gun, uh, heals and heavy HP so I could survive that engagement right there. Notice that I probably would have melted or died had I not had that extra heal or had that extra health right there. And we just eliminate the entire flank. So meanwhile, let's look at how Alpha Cap is doing while we're going to go ahead and push up forward here. Alpha Cap has taken over. Uh, by the Commissar and Summers, and Summers gets eliminated in Moscow because obviously the radar is getting eliminated right there. And let's take a look at, and there we go, we lost two ships right there. Okay, let's take a look at how that map progressed right there. So notice that Alpha was destroyed, um, or I'm sorry, we lost a cruiser and a, a, um, a destroyer right there to one radar cruiser. So right there, fair trade, I would say, Wisconsin and Moscow, I think, can hold off these three right here. Vermont's going to push this Vermont. St. Martin pushed Vermont. And look, again, we're focused right now is Charlie Bravo. Once we, again, the Druid is so powerful when you take over an entire flank, there's nothing that can withstand it. Without a radar cruise over here, it's just so difficult to defend against and very, very annoying. If you ever played against a Druid, even I played against a Druid, and it's so freaking annoying. And especially since you got um, this Vermont shooting around doing a Vermont, and you have the same Martin with radar coverage, it is a very, very devastating um, thing to face against. So, and now we're just going to melt. Um, <laughs> we're just melting at this point, uh, the, the Vermont. It's almost not a fair fight, so let's take a look at it right here. Yeah, just enjoy the uh, melting of the Vermont. I'll speed it up a little bit. And they pretty much that's just melting uh, the Vermont right there. San Martin takes out Marceau, and that's the game right there. And that's basically how you win the game, and uh, that's how you win on points right there. So forgive me at the top, the, the uh, gaming thing and the replay is uh, broken. But anyways, three kills right there, just bullying that whole side of the cap right there. And uh, that's pretty much how that. Um, now I'll show you another video in a minute um, about the Druid actually uh, ransacks an entire flank on the another map, which I really do enjoy, which is pretty fun and uh, enjoyable. But let's take a look at that uh, with the Druid uh, kind of pushing with a vampire. And it's really, really powerful uh, when you take over an entire flank. And uh, we'll take a look at that right now. All right, so here's another map with a Druid flanking with a this time with a vampire too. Now, this is everyone's favorite map, hot spot, very, very fun. Uh, I would say that the biggest contesting side is Alpha Bravo, but everybody loves to play at the uh, Charlie Point because that's probably the, the stalemate area. 
Um, I always say, like, you know, going through Bravo and Alpha is pretty strong as well. But, again, the con biggest major point everybody wants to go for where they bite off on is Charlie. So in this strategy, we actually uh, avoided it altogether. We just gave basically both destroyers will proceed together to Bravo, which is an interesting strategy. Uh, we wanted to try it out to see if this actually works because we know that Charlie's going to just be lost because there's two Shimas basically right here. So why not just get, we're just going to give him off the bat and we don't have to worry about it. So one less thing to worry about, but it's going to be a heavy kind of push um, just through uh, either the, the sides uh, with a battleship, almost three cruisers, as or actually two cruisers and two battleships right here progressing right there. Well, we have one uh, Guten Lau right here to provide air, air strike support in this general area right there. So you got air strike support with two destroyers pushing up through Alpha. Um, Bravo. Hopefully we can bully one of their destroyers. So if they do pr proceed to have a destroyer that actually goes and caps Alpha, which most likely they do if you have that, we're going to just go eliminate them right there with a two on one. I'll be going to never pick a fair fight. And of course you have everybody else holding, contesting Charlie and figuring out what's going to happen right there. And then they can do a final push in the end because we're going to wait to see what they actually do, what the makeup is because we don't know what to do. Can't make a decision without education, right? So you're gonna have to figure out well where are the ships at first. Once we analyze that, we're gonna then proceed. Do we push the right? Do we push right through the cap at uh, over uh, around at Charlie, or do we actually push flank right through through Charlie from the eastern side, or do we just do a heavy push straight through and overwhelm Charlie? Meanwhile, their ships are gonna be basically in a retreat, which most of the time in clan battles I've seen a lot of ships kind of just, pro just proceed kiting backwards, which is interesting. They're all hugging these islands right here, hugging island here, hugging island here, which is an interesting strategy. I don't know if it works a lot for me, my taste. And of course, they'll have either a cruiser or a battleship proceed to Alpha, which will eliminate them with airstrikes and two destroyers right there. Very, very difficult to defend. So let's take a look at see uh, actually how the replay goes on this one, how it actually turns out, and we'll kind of analyze it play by play as to uh, what we'll see. Uh, in, in actually how it actually plays out. So let's go ahead and replay right here. We'll speed up again, look at initial position, look at the mini map on the bottom right and look at initial positioning right there. Again, we have two destroyers going to Bravo, Guten Lao. Moskva goes for the, of uh, course, radar area. So this is where we want to have radar right here, uh, proceeding right there, of course. And again, um, having that radar will cover at Charlie so we can analyze, hey, where are they at? What are they doing? Goliath will, is a very good kind of kiter away, burn down ships. Ohio will support the Goliath. And we have Cecilia supporting Charlie Cap with Moscow. Meanwhile, Guten Lao and the two, two destroyers here will go ahead and push uh, into um, Alpha. There, and and there uh, is our Shimakaze. So Vampire 2, very good at spotting destroyers, decent enough concealment. Uh, of course, Shima outspots him, but you know what? With the Hydro and everything within range, now we're just going to melt this guy. Look at that power of the AP right there on the side of a Shimakaze helping out our Vampire. It's just not a fair fight at that point, but we don't want to pick fair fights, and boom, Shimakaze goes down. That is the first kill of the game. Vampire and, uh, and Druid working this flank right here. And as you can see, going back over here to Charlie, we've got this nice makeup and a nice front line right there. Oh, and unfortunately, Goliath shoots the vampire too. We lose him right there. So let's take a, let's take a look at that, how that actually progressed and uh, go back to the screen here. So what actually turned out to happen, like we just predicted, uh, that they would have sent uh, one uh, destroyer to Alpha Cap. And then, of course, we have the two destroyers bowling right there. We had our, our uh, Guten Lao right there. And of course, we had the two battleships right here, a Goliath out there with Ohio support. And we got the Moscow there to cover the radar. So what actually again happened, again, we knew that they were gonna take Charlie Cat. We radar, we figure where they're out. And now it's just kind of figure out where are we gonna position ourselves to take on this, this front. And we have a very nice line of ships, which is good. Um, I do like the fact that there are a line of ships that allows us to, you know, coordinate fire, focus fire, and everybody's on a certain line, a B line, be no further line over here. So we're not pushing too aggressive. We can figure out where we're going to be at, what we're going to do. And of course, we eliminated one destroyer there. We lost one in our, to get, uh, on our side as well. But now we're going to go ahead and try to push uh, our Druid through here and then cap Alpha and proceed out. Um, Guten Lao will take Bravo. And now it's just overwhelming Charlie at this point because we've taken a battleship and a cruiser away from the flight, so we might have a good advantage over here if we can eliminate their destroyer and then proceed for it as well. So let's take a look at actually how it actually plays out. All right, so let's see here. We've taken this cap right here. We've got Alpha, or we got Alpha. Now, this is what I like about the Druid. We can post up and grab island cover. So the biggest thing right here 
is that once you grab island cover right here, you're, you're shielded by from the Goliath support, and now we have GK, which we outspot, so he can't spot us. No radar, nothing over here, and this is where we can spot the GK, and we can also provide fire support on the Goliath being shot up by the Goon Lao. So we notice the Goon Lao is going to come up and support us with uh, airstrike power and firepower, and this is going to give us the ability just to shoot the Goliath free will. We got smoke. We got perma spotting for us from the Goon Lao, and notice that we are capping. Uh, we're trying to contest and hold Charlie right there. Ohio's pushing forward with the Goliath in support. Meanwhile, we're just going to go ahead and melt uh, Goliath right here and just see if we can get as much power as we can or uh, HP off of him as we can. And he's running away. So again, we're going to bully the ships out of Alpha with the Druid. Again, Druid very, very annoying to play against with no radars to cover support or destroyer support. And uh, again, the the problem with the Goliath is it's got that super heal of the you know the, their British cruiser line. I mean, it is it just reprints the ship basically. So we're gonna try to get as much HP as we can off of him. He's doing a good job of angling. Again, our our shells got the improvement angles, so angling won't really matter too much. We're still taking 1450, 1672 right off the bat off of him. And look at that. If he gets a nice broadside in, we had to stop firing there. We don't get spotted by the GK. And uh, with no smoke cover, so our smoke covers are the quick smokes of the British line. That gives us a uh, very decent cover for a short amount of time. I like them. The quick burst, hit and run tactics. GK is pushing into Alpha right now, so we are not going to sit around and wait for that. We're going to go ahead and push and see if we can eliminate the Goliath right off the bat. Let's see if we can push and, and cap Alpha. Meanwhile, Charlie Cap is still being contested, but we have to do our part as a destroyer player. Their Des Moines go down. We lose our good allowed to the GK secondaries, and we got to eliminate the Goliath. Come on, baby. Get this Goliath out here. Oh, man, now he's super healing, so that is a bad thing. I don't know if we can uh, survive being uh, this his super heal, so we got to, yep, he, uh, we smoke up. And we go undetected. We got to pick and choose our battles, folks. We cannot win this engagement two versus one. Again, I like the quick smokes from the, the, the Druid for that reason. We are going to go ahead and run away. Let's take a look at look back where they're at. So GK is pushing us within 6-kilometer hydro. We don't want to be within. He has that. He has 6-kilometer hydro. It spots us. Here's an open shot right there. And boom, Goliath takes out by the Cecilia. That is how the power of focus fire and calling in for support works really, really well in that regard. Okay, meanwhile at Charlie Cap, they have overwhelmed uh, the uh, their cap as well. And let's take a look. Uh, again, I'll, I'll pause the video to go back to the screen right there to show you what actually turned out to happen. So meanwhile, um, we actually were able to overwhelm Charlie, eliminate their majority of their flank, their shores. We're going to over like, take over every single flank and gap right there, which allows us to push in through. And then their cruisers, of, of course, everything is just kind of running away. Their, their shore got eliminated right there. Okay, once we eliminate that one, and then their battleship is now preoccupied with me, which is good. We want to drag their battleship, heavy battleship, out of the way so he can't support their little uh, destroyer at Charlie. Once Charlie's overwhelmed, they will take out their destroyer. And then, of course, it's just mopping up their their last fi ra final remaining cruisers right there, and that helps us out to overwhelm the cap. So, actually, surprised that the Alpha Bravo with two destroyers actually seemed to kind of work out because they just we were just able to drag a majority of their ships out. Once we eliminated their first destroyer, they had no spotting, no eyes and ears over at Alpha, and now it's just slow rolling it into Charlie. It's very difficult for Shima to with all this island cover here to eliminate uh, a lot of their ships. So. It's kind of difficult uh, for that one little Shima up again. Feel bad for that, but again, you don't want to pick a fair fight. And now we're just kind of eliminating uh, the GK at this point by ourselves. We look, we're dragging him out. Uh, Shimakaze uh, Charlie's by himself, getting spotted right there. Yep, yeah, he's got nowhere to go. And now it's just uh, mopping it up at that point. Salem is out of position. They can't uh, use radar covers to help the, the uh, Shima. And now it's just one last cruiser and one last uh, battleship as well. So, yep, that's pretty much it. And now we're just going to do this annoying little bit right here. If you guys want to watch this, this is soothing to me. And just watching us melt uh, a battleship uh, with the Druid. The power of the Druid just doing so much damage. And we'll kind of speed it up right here. And I just like watching that. So yeah, we just box boat. He fires at us. He's preoccupied. But he's got his guns are kind of going back and forth, back and forth. Not knowing where to go. Where's he going? Where's he going? As like, where's the destroyer? Oh, now we got battleship shooting us. It's really difficult. Uh, yeah, very, very annoying. So now they're now the Salem's kind of come back, but by then it's too late, and now we just got this uh, GK, and there he goes down as well. And now we're just looking at all that HP just getting melted right there. 
Yeah, he's pretty much not having a good day, and that's how you end the game right there. So that's pretty much it. Hope you uh, guys like to enjoy the video. Let me know your thoughts of how the power of the Druid, you know, flanking, especially slow rolling it, being patient, being um, methodical, moving together, focus firing, and then the just uh, different um, uses usages of, uh, plane, I guess, plane spotting. Again, I know it's in the game right now. Uh, of course, you got radar coverage, and of course, you have the Goon Lows with the airstrikes today. So very, very difficult. Uh, as long as you're positioning them correctly, knowing where they're going. But let me know your thoughts in the comments below what you think of the video. Hope you guys enjoy it. And if, if we, I'm always learning something. If there's something wrong that we're doing or you see something that can be brought up, absolutely. I welcome it. I'm not here to know everything. Just showing you what the facts are and how they play out. But as always, Bill will be at the bin of the screen. Hope you guys are doing well. Until next time, say hi out there, and we'll see you soon. Be safe. Cheers.